This time, we will have the president of the Rotary Club, Vanilla Metro. He is also the CEO of JBC Interior Motors Design and Works. And he is also the director of Mercy Worldwide Cebu. We will give you, he will give you a short message, and here is Brother Giuseppe Sema Franca. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. And um, at this time, I want to give a charge from the scriptures. And first of all, I want to thank all the sponsors and all of you who bought tickets and uh, those who dedicated songs with a prize. Okay? And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for supporting us and for being with us tonight. The money and the support. how that small amount you bought for the ticket could actually multiply and become an instrument for a miracle to happen in the lives of people. You can take my word for that and we can even replace this recording and we would by next year and then we would see the tens and probably hundreds of people's lives changed for the good. But I'd like to share to you a passage in the Old Testament in the book of Haggai. Um, I'll give you a little background of what happened here. By King Cyrus from the exile. In fact, a few years back, they were able to rebuild the foundation of the temple. You know, with King Cyrus as their sponsor. Okay? And the work was paid from the royal treasury. But there were oppositions from their neighbors. There were threats and persecutions. In fact, the people around them set out to discourage the people of Judah and intimidate them so that they would be afraid to go on rebuilding. They even hired counselors to discourage the workers and to frustrate their plans. And so the work in the rebuilding of the temple stopped. It halted for 16 years. The people stopped the rebuilding, they stopped working, they stopped dreaming, and they stopped planning. And of course, they started thinking more for themselves, for their own future, and for their family. And God sent the prophet Haggai. So let's go to Haggai chapter 1 and verse 1. It says here, the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, a word, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shelfiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Josadah, the high priest. These people say that I must not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your final houses while the house remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty, because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces on people and livestock and all the labor of your hands. You know, this is very relatable even in our time today. Many have lost their dreams for God. And so many as well don't even have dreams for God because they don't know God. 
and no one has told them about God. They have no idea of God's purpose for their lives and the work that God has called all of us to do. And some of us think that it's not yet time to build the house of God because business is not picking up yet. And some of us think that it's not yet time to build the house of God because COVID-19 pandemic is not yet over. Some of us think that it's not yet time to build the house of God because there's just many disasters going on. Now, I do understand that. I do understand the overwhelming situation we are facing. This year's this been crazy, right? But, by the way, we will face more troubles tomorrow. For sure, there will be more troubles tomorrow as each day has enough troubles of its own, right? So if you're thinking this way that it's not yet time to build the house of God, then you have to, be, you have to give careful thoughts to your ways. Haven't you noticed you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it? Haven't you noticed that you expected much but it turned out to be little? This is because the house of God remains a ruin in your lives. But God has called a drought so that you will understand that God is against your direction on how you live your life. Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your panel houses where the house of God remain a ruin? Are you living comfortably in your glass house? Are you living comfortably in your tiled house, in your laminated house while God's house is in ruin? God's house remain a ruin while we are busy or while you are busy with your own house. God's house remain a ruin because you are too busy in your own house, in your own domestic issues, in your personal problems, and you are not contributing to rebuilding the house of God. Today, what we are doing, this fundraising, is all about rebuilding the God's house. God's house in Cebu and the Visayas. Amen? And I want to lift up everyone in this committee. All right? The singers, the graphics team, the computer specialists that we have, the marketing team, and everyone else who spent countless hours and sacrificed so much time, money, and energy to make this event to happen so that we can have an avenue to raise funds for the rebuilding of the house of God in Cebu. These are examples of people who went up to the mountain to bring down the timber in order to build the house of God. Amen? And you have proven yourselves to build the house of God first than your own house. You have prioritized building God's house than your own. And God is super proud of you and surely he will not forget you and he will bless your efforts and your life. Now, let's see what happened to the people of Judah upon hearing this rebuke and exhortation from Haggai. In verse 12, it says, Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord, then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shelter, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and the spirit with the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. They obeyed the word of the Lord. They came together and began to work in the house of the Lord Almighty. Amen? And because of their repentance, they were able to establish the nation of Israel again. And through that nation, Jesus was born for everyone. Today, let's continue the rebuilding are already laid. And all we have to do is to complete the work. And we invite you to help. 
Okay? We need all the help we need. And again, I want to thank all of our sponsors for supporting us and every one of you who bought a ticket or more. Your support means the work in rebuilding the house of God in Cebu will continue. Thank you for your support. God knows your heart. And God will be the one to reward you and to God be the glory.